Well, Glenmark has just outlined a blueprint for the next decade for the company, and Glenn Saldana is here to take us through that. Glenn, thanks a lot for speaking with CNBC TV18. First up, you know, you've outlined uh, a lot of pipeline as far as your R&D drugs are concerned, your discovery pipeline, um, and you've also outlined that you would be looking at potential out-licensing partners from those products. How is the pipeline looking like, first of all? Which are the products where you see a lot of potential for going to market, and then uh, obviously, the out-licensing potential for those products. So I think, uh, you know, as a company, we've taken a relook at our entire R&D strategy, and clearly the three areas where we are strongly focused are uh, oncology, uh, dermatology, and respiratory. Um, if you look at the pipeline, we're doing some excellent work, particularly in biologics in the oncology space. We have four oncology drugs, uh, one in the clinics and, and the other three on their way to the clinics. Um, so our strategy, outlicensing remains the backbone of our strategy. So clearly, uh, I think going forward, you will see outlicensing deals both on the biologic side as well as uh, some of the rest of the pipeline. Mm -hmm. uh, what could be the you know the timeline that we could see figure out as far as the outlicensing deals are concerned, and when is it that you would uh, you know anticipate your drugs to go in for outlicensing? Early phase two uh, uh, or? Uh, late phase two, uh, what would be the plan there? Well, I think, uh, you know, in oncology, you get proof of concept much earlier. So even in phase one, right, I mean, there are possibilities that you could do deals uh, because you're directly dosing in patients. So I think uh, it's very hard for us to predict the exact timeline, but uh, you would see out licensing across the, the spectrum, right, from preclinical phase one and phase two. Mm -hmm. um, our goal is over the next 12 months to at least try and conclude one deal, uh, and that's what we are gunning for right now. Mm -hmm. And what would be the overall you know, market size of products that you're looking to out-license from your uh, pipeline? Well, what would be the market potential? I think each of these drugs are multi-billion dollar products and they are addressing large unmet medical needs in areas ranging from breast cancer, multiple myeloma, uh, colorectal cancer. So the market potential is very large. Uh, so, I mean, from an out-licensing perspective, we should expect some good deals happening around the pipeline. Mm -hmm. If we talk of the revenue and the profitability focus for the company in the next five years and ten years, you've outlined certain goals that you've set for yourself. Uh, how are you looking to go about that and what are those goals? Well, I think from a revenue perspective, we hope to grow the business at about 15-20% CAGR over the next five years. So it's very strong revenue growth. Uh, as far as profitability goes, also you will see profits improving substantially. Our EBITDA margins, which is currently 20-21%, we see it scaling up uh, to close to 23% and then eventually 25%. I mean, that's the way we see it over the next 10 years. And in terms of breakup, as far as uh, how much would novel uh, products contribute to your revenues in the next five to seven years? And the outline as far as specialty generics is concerned because obviously U.S. is one uh, of your big market where you're putting a focus on specialty generics. So I think over the next three to five years, the, uh, the, the revenue from specialty uh, generics, particularly in the respiratory area, uh, will start playing out, right? Both specialty products as well as generic products in the respiratory area. Um, I think post that novel products, our first novel products we anticipate come into market around the 2022 time frame and that's when we will start seeing revenues coming out of that and by 2025 we expect almost 30% revenues coming out of the novel products. Mm -hmm. If we talk of the US market which is your largest market, uh, you've launched uh, Generic CTR in this uh, uh, last week itself. Uh, how is that product doing? What is the uh, you know expectation as far as revenues and sales for that product in the first six months is concerned? And how do you see it pan out as far as market share? Well, we've launched the product through our partner, uh, uh, Par Pharmaceuticals, and I think the launch has gone really well of generic uh, ezetimibe in the U.S. As far as sales goes, initially we had put out an estimate of around 200 to 50 million dollars. Mm -hmm. We still maintain those estimates. That's the only guidance I can give right now. Mm -hmm. And as far as growing the specialty generic portfolio in the U.S. is concerned, what sort of product pipeline could, could we anticipate, let's say, in as FY17, FY18, FY19? Um, respiratory possibility is one where you're looking at some of the launches, if you could highlight that. 
Well, I think um, you know the specialty products are mainly coming out of various technologies that we that we work on, right? Ranging from MDIs, DPIs, nebulizers, nasal sprays, various technologies. We also have one biosimilar in the pipeline. So I think all that will be the key driver, right, uh, for the company over the next five years. Mm -hmm. Which could be the first product coming out of this, um, and when could that be for the U.S. market? So the most advanced product is a nasal spray right now, uh, which. Uh, is currently in phase three, which will probably be the first to launch. But on the back of that, we have a host of other products in development. Mm -hmm. With the changing competitive landscape in the U.S. market in the last two to three years, how have you changed your, uh, you know, strategy for the U.S. market, um, and where do you think it is going to take you in the next three years? Let's say. Well, I think our strategy is now to focus more on complex generics and. Um, you know, on the back of that, we've done various in licensing deals with various companies to develop some of these complex generics. So, on the generic side, our growth will mainly come out of complex generics and and uh, certain niche areas like dermatology. Uh, and on the back of that, we'll also launch these specialty products. And of course, now respiratory is a new segment uh, which we're talking about. We have three generic respiratory products in development, which will also commercialize over the next five to seven years. Mm -hmm. In the next five years, if we have to break down, you've said oncology, respiratory, as well as dermatology would be three key areas. If you want to you know, break down in terms of revenue uh, push that these three segments will give you in the U.S. and overall for the company, how would you do it? Well, I think it's hard to bifurcate because I think different segments will will come in at different points in time. Today, clearly derm is the largest segment for us, but over the next three to five years or maybe five to seven years, right, respiratory generics could play a, a significant role and uh, between generics and specialty respiratory products and then eventually oncology. So it's hard to say as to how the 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 the, the product mix and the, the contribution mix will change across these three segments in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, one big concern that the analysts have been having is to do with your debt uh, structure. You did re raise FCB, FCCVs. Uh, what is the current status as far as uh, debt is concerned and what is the plan to pay off that in the next well, I think, uh, I mean, clearly debt will keep coming down uh, for Glenmark. Uh, I think, uh, you know, this year and we'll have lower debt than where we finished off last year. So I think you'll see a constant decline in debt from year on. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of the generic Zetia revenues are helping substantially in repaying some of the debt. Mm -hmm. And as far as uh, any more fundraising plans are concerned or would you look, in, would you look at, uh, you know, pairing some bit of your stake in the company to raise some more uh, money we have no, plans? we have absolutely no plans for any further capital raise as a as a company in the near future. Mm -hmm. Just as a last question, you know, you have categorically said you're not looking at any uh, big uh, acquisitions in the market, but would you be open to some smaller acquisitions? And where are those areas where you think you can uh, acquire some companies or products? Well, I think uh, at least in the next year or two years, we don't see M&A playing a role. But even thereafter, if we do any acquisitions, it'll be just bolt-on acquisitions, uh, either in certain markets where we don't have a presence, or um, it could be in certain technologies that we think will help the strategic growth and the growth plans of the company. Could that be also in the R&D space, the discovery pipeline? Could you get that it's less pipeline? likely we would acquire anything in, in R&D because we've got our hands full with our own pipeline and our own developments. Uh, so unless there's a product which is already commercial, it's less likely we do a deal around that. All right, Glenn. Thank you so much for talking to us. <laughs>